You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Brian Catherman. With me is a, a, a longtime friend, past host. Introduce <laughs> yourself. Well, start with your is, name. Uh, this is Dr. <laughs> Jared Jenkins. Uh, yes. <laughs> Welcome back, Jared. <laughs> I know who hasn't been on here in a long time, and it and it took Brian being in another state for me to for us to get our schedules coordinated. But now we're we're coordinated. So, so what are you what are you doing now? So Tell now I am, uh, yeah, I'm the senior pastor of Risen Life Church here in Salt Lake City, Holiday, Utah, and uh, also teaching for the Salt Lake School of Theology and Gateway Seminary, teaching Old Testament this fall, and. Um, Probably yeah. doing a ton of other things, right? Just staying doing super a ton busy. Of other things. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Hey, yeah. so so Jared, here's what I'm doing. I'm in a series called yeah. False Gospels, and instead of doing like you know, hey, we're looking at all the major world religions. I'm actually looking at the subtle things that seem to impact most of the people we know, friends, maybe even yeah, these a things. A lot creeping. of them. <laughs> a lot of these things, right? Like like the soft prosperity gospel and and. I mean, there's just tons of stuff we're talking about, but I, I thought, I thought specifically of you and I don't know, I don't have a name for this. Maybe nobody's named it. Maybe you could write a book on this. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it's, there's a whole group of people that you're probably very familiar with because you were a climber, still are. You probably see these people from time to time in all your outdoor activities. I saw um, lots of them at lunch today because I was across the street from the climbing gym. Oh, so there's, yeah. So there's this, there's <laughs> this <pretty> fresh, <laughs> there's sort of this, uh, this whole culture, this ethos among mostly, I'm, I'm not going to say it's limited to, but the outdoor community of people, you know, that are, I can find my peace, or maybe I even, I can find my God, they might say in the mountains, I can, everything will bring me back to an inner Zen, a core or whatever. If I just treat myself well, meaning like physically well, and maybe emotionally well, and then I engage somehow with nature. Right. It's like the yeah. nature gospel, which is probably not a good name for it. But yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like totally. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the the outdoor recreation gospel or outdoor recreation idol that uh, I mean, is huge here in Salt Lake City. It's it's big other places, but it is particularly large here. Yeah. And it, and it looks to uh, I might even go so far as to say like self-fulfillment through outdoor engagement. Right. Um, so, yeah. Outdoor mental, idol, yeah, you know. both in community and spiritually and and physically, all of it. And a lot of those individuals who do this, or us, if you know, we're tied to this in some way. Um, and I think you said the word, the right word is idol. We're talking about false gospels, but this is this yeah. idol that we sort of put our hope in, um, yeah. whether we realize it or not. This community gravitates to others in the community. Yes, very much like it. So there's a whole. There's this whole external sort of factor where not only are you finding all this in yourself, you're connecting with a whole bunch of people that are sort of tied to this same false idol, right? And it sort of creates like yeah. the church of outdoorism or something. To totally. I mean, they like to always use the word like this is our tribe and we're, you know, d they define all these kind of characteristics of their tribe and it it's very self-focused, right? Yeah. Okay. So like not just, I, I said climbers, but this is true of just all kinds of people who are oh, mountain outdoors. bikers, skiers, hikers, you, you name it. Outdoorsy, fitnessy, yeah. whatever. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing, Jared, is I'm walking through and kind of examining the worship of these false idols through these five questions. I'm going to throw them out there for you, but it's a uh, who or what, which what might be more appropriate here, but what is God? What is man? Uh, where did we come from? Where are we going? How do we get there? And I like to yeah. contrast this against sort of the biblical view, even if these individuals might not be ascribing what they hold to, if it is somewhat biblical or not, there are going to be some things that are maybe parallel, maybe not. And then the other thing I want to suggest as I ask you some questions is this isn't going to be everybody. You can't broad brush this on everyone. No. So I just kind of want to encourage, maybe think about maybe people you've encountered and just give us maybe a some of these might have multiple facets of where this goes, but we just want to kind of capture the general idea. So to this community, who or what is God? Maybe uh, there's multiples. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, 
for most of, for most people engaged in these communities, God is non-existent, right? So so God is the universe, um, and kind of the forces of nature and and the forces of the universe that that bring things about. And well, so, are most of these folks like atheist or just apathetic to these big things? Do they hold uh, on to? I think I think most of them are are atheistic. Um, I mean, they're very, you know, they're very much bought in with kind of an evolutionary naturalistic worldview. Um, so, so would the yeah. would the world and evolution and nature that that is ultimately probably what they see as some indicator of God, right? Like the things of nature. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they they see it as, um, you know, so the the universe and and naturalism is ultimate, but there's a there's kind of a spiritual component of connecting with the universe and connecting with all these forces of nature. So they right? are tr- there is a connection though. They're trying to connect. There's a connection. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, and they would even describe it as a spiritual connection, but it, but it, yet it's godless, right? Like it's, it's connecting with this kind of bigger forces of the universe. So I'm in Nebraska right now. So I have not heard this once since I've got <laughs> here, but yeah. do you still hear like, yeah, I really connect with God in the mountains. Is that still a pretty do- prevalent thing? Absolutely. I mean, and I, I hear that both from Christians and some non-Christians, right? I mean, some non-Christians that, that still hold the theistic worldview, you know, they say this is kind of the closest I ever get to God, right? I don't know him really, but I can I can feel him out there uh, or I see, you know, work. But and then Christians, obviously, um, like when what? I go out there, like I see it as God's handiwork, right? Like I just admire it all as God's right, handiwork. Right, right. But what I'm talking, like, so you see it as God's handiwork because you have a biblical worldview. Yeah. Uh, but like, I remember, um, and I used to feel this way, like either you the first group you described, not really thinking about God, but then there's this other group that's like, I don't need to go to church. I can find God out here. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a deistic, uh, impersonal God. That doesn't tell you what's right and wrong, so that's why they like him. Yeah, right. Well, it's, it's, kind, of it's like, kind of a pagan version, right? Like there's a little yeah, bit of a pagan paganism version. thing. All right, yeah. cool. Okay, so uh, let's go to question two. In this uh, thinking, and you might have to go with a couple of these different angles. Who is man, or what? What is humanity in this? Is there? This is probably where the question of like sinfulness. Um, yeah. Who are we? How do we connect to all this? I think in the I think in the just the paganistic kind of outdoorsy person, you know, someone who doesn't think God's out there. These are all just forces of nature and the universe is kind of the driver of all things. Um, I mean, man is just kind of a cog in the wheel, really. Like, is, you're, is there a high you're, view of man, though? Slow mm, view of man? What do you think? It's a lower view of man. I mean, okay. you're just kind of, you know, you're one number among many and you're just part of the system. Right. Like you you're just a cog in the wheel. You're you're fairly insignificant okay. on the grand scheme of things. So do what you want because it doesn't make a huge Yeah, it doesn't how make does it, a wait, huge how does this plan to like in the, some of the environmental stuff where like there are people that say if men were just not in the mountains, the mountains would be perfect. <laughs> how does that work? Well, yeah. Uh sometimes those things can come in conflict, right? Because some some of these people love the outdoors and do lots of good outdoorsy things. But there, you know, then there's a more environmental group that would say, Oh no, leave it all all uh um, untouched. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're I mean, there's obviously this is such a broad sort of how do we would you say before we even go through the rest of these questions, do people even think about these questions in this kind of community? Um they do occasionally, but but I think they they definitely push the God question aside, or maybe are even angry at the God question. I have found. I think the man question they they get they get more of, but it is kind of a fatalistic and nihilistic view. Just kind of like, well, I'm just part of the system, and my time is short, so I better get all that I can and enjoy everything that's out there, right? Okay, so that makes sense. Question three. So very kind of yeah. self focused. Well, this sort of this that bleeds into this, like so. I'm guessing maybe this isn't anchored into anything. Maybe it's very anchored. But where do we come from? Where did we come from? How does this question get? I mean, is this like eh, we're just 
do we not think about it? Do we think about it? Were we brought here by aliens? Was there some evolution thing? You said there was an evolution sort of natural. Is that the biggest probably push to this? What do you, I where think, does... yeah, I mean, most, most of my climbing friends have a very evolutionary worldview. Like, again, we're just, we're just, nature brought this about, nature brought us about, right? Nature will take us out. We're just kind of a cog in the machine. So nature really is probably the word you'd put on the idol. Nature's yeah. nature's causing things. There's a causal factor. There's a created factor. There's yep. I mean, that's a big deal. Yep, and it'll end you right. Like it, it's it's so basically, nature takes on a lot of the the kind of godlike characteristics, but it's not really knowable. It just it moves at its own pace. And then you go back to nature, right? And you like, go back to nature, which is question four. Okay, so where are we going? Is that probably the the bigger? We just go back to a warm food. Uh, there's yeah, nothing I mean, past that there's i mean how does that I go mean, you, you get you get two answers and i think you get this from a lot of people that don't know jesus you either get the like yeah we just go back to nature we're worm food there's nothing beyond this you won't think you know there'll be no consciousness etc or there's kind of the general and i think this comes from christianity and hopeful thinking um but there's the general like they've gone to a better place but this kind of um, right uncharted undefined better place well that we, and maybe it's even some you know mix of a little eastern like this kind of zen like you know nirvana zone well um, i always want to ask people how do you but, know you don't know I, like i think it's like this societal sort of we all just sort of accepted this thing that nobody can pinpoint who like if you if you remove the various religions of the world and you just go with this nature pagan thing how do we know it's a better place like who yeah. who says it's just, we just like well yeah. we've all just embraced it it must be <laughs> yeah and you hear stuff like oh they're just making you know ski turns in the sky or they're just you know they're climbing their best route today or they, they're looking down on me and they're they're giving me power you know and it's like from where and what like what what where so are they in that regard so you have the one where like we just get you know sort of morphed back into the back into the fabric of nature and then in that one yeah. you still definitely hold a personality you're still definitely doing all your hobbies yeah you still hold like a personhood whatever i mean that's that's an interesting but you're doing all the outdoor things that you were already doing here but they're better but they're better yeah and you get to do more of them yeah that's kind of interesting very interesting uh okay so which is really like a, I mean you see the self-focus of that it's like after you die, you actually get more self focus, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. yeah. You get like more you, of yourself. You actually get better of better time with yourself, you know, like so yeah. I had never thought about it like that. So question five is I think it'd be really interesting. How do we get there? Well, it seems like there is not very well defined. Yeah, no, it's not at all. So yeah. it's just kind of it, general positivism that things will go well at the end. Do how many? How often do? Let's use your climbing buddies. Let's just dial this in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, climbing is dangerous. There's aspects yeah. where you could really get hurt or die. Yeah. Do people think much about where I'm going beyond the route today? And I mean, is that just sort of pushed off? Um, kick the can down the road. Don't think about it. I mean, they think about not dying, and they they think about the risk of that sometimes. Um, not always, but you know, they, they push off the the more existential questions about what occurs after death um yeah so like what happens when uh like if let's say there's a climber climber is a christian let's go with that yeah. and the climber falls dies that sort of thing in the act of yeah. doing this great thing in nature yeah. do these individuals do they put much thought into the funeral do they is it just i'm like what does that look like no, I mean, most most funerals that I've been to, like, outdoorsy people have been, like, you know, always, like, the celebration of life, right? We just remember all the cool things they did. They're usually cremated. They're usually sprinkled in the mountains, right? You know, like... Sent back to where, like, that's the best place ever, so sprinkle that's the best. There. Like, one of my best friends got sprinkled at the top of Snowbird, you know, like, they got off the tram and had a little service up there, and then they sprinkled them at the top of the mountains, you know Because I mean? there's some recognition that there's something significant in that spot. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of to bring this back around to a conclusion. How, how does this for individuals almost serve like a, 
a gospel. Like this is the story of whatever it is, salvation, hope, Maybe it's not those things. How does this sort of serve as the framework for worldview and life if it's all nature? Yeah, this is an inter- that's a good question. And I've thought a lot about this just in wrestling, even my own life with when these things have become idols. But, you know, there there is uh, these niche kind of outdoor sports. I think pe- give people a significance and identity and so that's some of the gospel to them that that we have found something better than the rest of humanity, right? So like we've we've found something outside of kind of this mass blob of the norm. Yeah, so we've kind of hit some kind of new nirvana. Um, and, and these things are really fun, right? And they, and they do they mess with your emotions yeah. and your well, mind. yeah, we should, we should say like your brain. climbing isn't like a false gospel or going in the mountains, but like you said, I can go and enjoy God's creation. I can do all this, but I haven't let it slip into that sense of idolatry and false gospel. So we're talking about when it's already slipped. Let's be clear about that. Yeah. So how yeah, do you bring the then, gospel into this thinking, I guess? Well, and then, I mean, just to run down that other road for just a second, you also, so there's one, there's significance in like, I've achieved something that's not normal, um, even though these are huge industries, which I think is funny but also that you've achieved some connection with the universe beyond normal. That makes right? sense. Yeah. And so that, so these are, these are kind of the existential fulfillment pieces of it. And so then it, then it just becomes a, this addicting drug. Like I've got to have this, I've got to have this connection, these experiences, because this is where I find my identity and really fulfillment in life. Um, and so as soon as I fall ill or my climbing partner quits on me, like, you know, or whatever, these become big problems because now you're keeping me from my idol. Uh, life crises, crises. Yeah, life crises. Yeah. Or I have to like, I actually have to have a job, you know, to pay for I things. can't eat if I just climb yeah. all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh, or you go homeless and live in the back of a pickup truck and bum off That's everybody, right? right? Like, yeah, or a shack in Little Cottonwood. So, all right. So uh, let's bring this back around. We're just about yeah. out of time. Um when you think about the gospel, how do you, one who does enjoy these things, how do you keep the gospel central, the, the biblical gospel, so that this idol can be pushed off and not be a temptation? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, one is, uh, as a Christian, I have a theistic worldview, and and so I know the God of the universe through Christ who has made creation. So, my my experience of nature is one in which I'm giving praise back to God and glorifying God, right? So, like, I, I'm not there. Uh, I, it actually connects me to something even beyond nature, right? Like, nature is still it bound by time and space, and it'll pass away one day. And so it, it's saying there's something even greater out there. Um, and I also, I think that's where I get my identity. So then... You know, kind of the these things that these recreation times, I mean, they're going to come and go. They come and go of seasons of life. They come and go with your health. Um, you know, they, they come and go as you have kids and marriages and um, all these sort of things. And so, um, you know, if your identity in, is in those things, you get really wrecked. Um, but if you are if your identity is in God, then there you have a constant that is behind um, all these things as they come and go that keeps you from um crashing and burning right like you, you just um you're you're putting your ultimate trust and faith in god um and you know i, I think god also kind of monitors what we do like we shouldn't live recklessly god has asked us to live um in ways where we can be useful to him and be a benefit to him and so i think it puts some boundaries on some of those things at times um and, it's actually really helpful to think about, like putting your putting your enjoyment of these good things in their right place, so that they're submissive, submissive and subservient to your worldview and, and what God has dictated these should be. Exactly. Yeah, that's really helpful. Hey, unfortunately, we're running out of time here. We yeah. have, this has been good. It's so good to like. It's good to have you back, man, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Busy. We should. Yeah. Uh, I do want to do this. We should have you again. I think that'd be great, but I do want to end with some scripture. I think that's just sort of a a good way to go. So here's another summary of the gospel. Uh, This is going to be Ephesians chapter 2, verses uh, 8, 9, 
and 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of SaltyBeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.